and we are going to turn it on. And cross your fingers, nothing blows up. Hey guys, if y'all ever get out anywhere where you need electricity and there is none available, maybe you're out camping, or maybe you're out riding a electric scooter per se, and you don't have any electricity to charge it up, you got your vehicle, but you don't have any electricity. Well, I got something in today that is going to solve that problem. I can put this in the trunk of my car, carry it with me, I can use it camping. I've been out there fishing, needed my electric knife, no electricity. It's a bummer, man. But listen, I got something in right here. Let's get it opened up and check it out. Oh, yeah. This is a 100 amp hour lithium battery. Comes with your screws here to uh, put it in right there. Move this out of the way. And as you see, I pulled it right out of the box. It only weighs 23.4 pounds. So it's not gonna be that big of a hassle to move this around. It's a nice battery, y'all. I like it. Already. That's a 12 volt, 100 amp smart battery. It has BMS, and put a little paper here on it. And what that BMS means, basically, this is our Life PO4 battery boasts a built-in BMS for thorough safety. It shields against high temperature, over voltage, overload, overcharge, over discharge, over current, and short circuits. This ensures a safe operation. They're supposed to be good up to 15,000 cycles. We know the side of the battery here. Model 12B100A. Normal capacity is 1280 watt hours. Charge voltage is 14.4 plus 0.2 volts. Charge current max is 50 amps. Discharge current max is 120 amps. Charge temperature is zero degrees Celsius to 45 degrees Celsius. Discharge temp is minus 20 degrees Celsius to 65 degrees Celsius. I don't do Celsius, I do Fahrenheit, but we can figure that one out. And it says, do not short circuit the positive and negative poles. That's a given, y'all. We all know that. Smart BMS inside lithium ion phosphate deep cycle battery. Here's what I was reading. If you want to read that, it's right here. Like I said, it does come with your connectors here. And what is a battery without an inverter. I just happen to have an inverter by the same company, y'all. And you know, this is gonna work perfect for me because I just got in an electric scooter. I don't know how long it'll last. And when I'm out riding, there's not gonna be electricity around. There will be now. Plus, like I said earlier, I go fishing, I need my electric knife, now I'll have it with me. And this is small enough to put in the trunk of my car. I got the rest of my goodies right here. Of course, this review is about the battery mainly. So they want just just for curiosity's sake, let's say you got this in and you needed it right now. How many volts is it right now? Let's find out. I just happen to have a multimeter. Okay. I believe y'all can see that. Got a little bit of a glare from the light, but uh I think we'll be able to manage get our wires straight so we don't get our wires crossed. And we will stick that into the red and we will stick the black into the black. We are 13.15 volts. Now this type of battery is designed to be a storage of energy. It's not really designed to start a vehicle or say using a golf cart or something like that. It's designed to hold energy um, for your electrical appliances and your different tools. If you're out on the job site and you need a power tool and don't have anything to plug it into, between the battery and the inverter, you can just keep right on working. Now it says that it is ideal for home energy storage systems, RVs, travel trailers, portable TVs, trolling motors, and more. So if you want to put this out in your bass boat or your fishing boat and you got a trolling motor, use it for that. But don't use it for your starting battery. 
It's not designed for that. Now, another quick note on charging these batteries. These LiPo 4 batteries are not really designed to use just your standard battery charger. Those are designed, you know, the ones that you buy at Walmart or whatever. Those are the ones that are designed for your car batteries and things like that. The problem is, is they will generally charge a battery up to about 12.4 volts or so. And the lithium LiPo 4 batteries hold. All right, another quick note that I wanted to mention as far as charging these, if you have just your standard battery charger that you've always had that you use for your car or your pickup or whatever, your boats, those are designed for lead acid batteries, which means that they will charge a battery up to about 12.6 volts as opposed to the LiPo 4 batteries, and they are designed to hold a charge of about 14.4 volts. So if you used a regular battery charger, which you could use it, you're not going to get your LiPo 4 battery to full capacity. So you need a LiPo 4 battery charger. Okay, so since I don't have a LiPo 4 battery charger, I am going to just hook up our inverter and we'll, get, we'll plug the fan into it, just kind of show you. But uh, my real usage is going to be putting it in the trunk of the car and using it to uh, charge my scooter and to use my electric knife when I go fishing. When I go camping, I can run my lights off of it. So definitely going to be using it. But let's go ahead and hook this inverter up and just kind of show you. And then... Uh, We'll go put it in the car and I'll show you really what I'm going to be doing with it. Now, luckily, the inverter comes with your cables. So I didn't have to go buy any cables or anything. So we're in good shape there. Now, see, our inverter has a, a Type C plug, a USB port. You can plug in a remote with it right here. It comes with a remote so you can hook this up in your RV or wherever you need to and have a control panel. If you want to put this under a seat or somewhere out of the way, you'd be able to access turning it on and off with the remote. A 60 hertz and 50 hertz switch and two AC outlets. It is a 1500 watt, 12 volt, 120 volt, pure sign inverter. If you're looking for an inverter, make sure it's a pure sign especially if you're going to be running some delicate equipment, laptops, charging your phone, stuff like that. In ways the electricity is more smooth. You don't get the ripple effects because electricity comes in with like sound waves and a pure sign keeps it more level. You definitely need one of those if you're going to be using it on delicate, we'll say delicate equipment. Not really delicate, but it's Equipment that requires a constant flow. These just slide off. We can get a screwdriver and we will connect our cables and then we will connect our cables up here. Kind of a small screwdriver, but it's what I had in the drawer in here without having to go out to the toolbox. Be sure to put your caps back on there. Just to just in case something hits that, you won't have to worry about it uh, shorting across anything. I'm going to go ahead and hook up the positive lead, and then we will hook up the negative. That's kind of nice. It comes with little caps that you can put over that. Put that little cap back on there. There we go. Doesn't fit that on there real good, but it does go on there. Main thing is you cover it up so you're not going to really hit anything on it. And we will get our negative cable out here, or our ground wire. Put our cap on there. Woo! Got a little fire in the house. We definitely got some charge in here, y'all. Of course, we already knew that because we checked our voltage. Tightened up. There we go. We are hooked up, y'all. One thing I do wish these would stay on there, they're little rubber boots to keep it from vibrating if you, like, mounted this onto a metal deck or 
on a deck that might get some vibration. These little rubber boots kind of cushion that. I wish they would stay on there a little bit. I guess you could take a little bit of glue maybe, stick them on there. But once you get it mounted, they're not going to come off because of the way they're made. But uh, there we go. I'm going to turn the camera down a little bit so you can see the inverter. And we are going to turn it on. And cross your fingers, nothing blows up. We'll see. Now, I mentioned the remote a while ago. Um, here's the remote that will plug in right there. Get my finger out of the way. You can plug that in right there. And you can run this up to the front of your vehicle. And you'll have a switch right there. All right, let's turn it on. There we go. It registers your voltage right here. We're at 13.11. It's kind of leveled out. we got quiet now. We're in good shape. Like I said, you do have a USB-A and a USB-C port, so you can plug your phone in and charge it. And we are charging. That's a simple little test right there. We're in good shape. Okay, just for the sake of testing it, y'all, I have at my desk here is an electric desk. You'll see that in a moment. We're going to plug this in. I said I was going to use my fan, but the power cord is run up and under and around. And let's just do a test right here. And we're going to test this thing outside too to charge my scooter. We should have power. Let's walk around here and see. Oh, yes, we do. Look at this. And I know it does sound, it seems a little bit silly, y'all, but in all reality, I'll show you something. This is what I had my desk plugged into. You see, if I didn't plug it in right there, my cord would have to go way over here and plug in over there. That would not be good. You can use this thing for multiple things. Now, let's go outside, and I'm going to get this set in the vehicle and actually show you my real setup or how I plan to set it up. battery is getting low you just head on up to the charger and get it charged up and we are ready yeah, i've got it ready to go all i have to do is plug in my scooter sit in the car for a little bit and cool off and let it do its thing turn my power on that's it plug it in right out here 13, 13.2 volts. You get some charge on that thing. But remember, you have to have a special charger for this type of battery. I don't know if you can see that or not, but if you can see it, it's got a little red light on there, so we know we're getting power. And we know it's charging. Good job. Like I said, you can carry that in your car. No more space than that takes up. Easy peasy. I will set this down on the floor to keep it from sliding off top of the battery, but you could get a battery case and mount this on top of the battery case or bolt it to the side up here, wherever you need it. Really windy out here, so I'm covering this mic up. Hopefully y'all can hear me because it is windy. I'm going to get this thing charged up and go for a ride. Hey, I am an Amazon associate, so any qualifying purchases that you may make through any of my Amazon links, I will receive a small commission from. Thanks for watching.